Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Major funding for the Woodwright Shop is provided by... More than 40 million people who care for their cars and homes choose State Farm for their insurance. State Farm, a proud supporter of the Woodwrights Shop. Hey, hello again. Welcome back to the Woodwright Shop. I'm Roy Underhill and I'm so glad you can be with me again today because it looks like the fleet has come in. Yes, the fleet is in the flask. The boat is in the bottle. And that can only mean that that master of the maritime miniature has come to visit to show us how to do boats in bottles. Yes, folks, it's Jim Goose Goodwin here. Yes, hey, good to see Roy, you, Jim. How's it going? All right, very good, very good. You're going to show us to do ship in a bottle like this one right here now. Is that right? Right. This is a, a Sharpie, more specifically a Carolina Sharpie. And this particular Sharpie is called the Hattie Creef uh -huh. and based out of Elizabeth City. And this modest little workboat holds an important place in history. Oh, really? And that's what you've got kind of assembled over here, a history of a specific region of the United States in maritime models. This is the Outer Banks history. Right. And uh, just like in any ship model, uh, not only is it a piece of art, but it's also a piece of history. Mm, and this particular piece right here, I'm calling Blackbeard's Fleet, and ah. it has the Queen Anne's Revenge, ah. the two uh, sloops that accompanied Blackbeard, the okay. Adventure and the Ranger. And, and up here in the neck, I even see you've got Blackbeard I, himself there. Definitely uh, watching over the place. Uh, wonderful. Now, of course, uh, the Outer Banks was called the Graveyard of the Atlantic, all these ships sinking there. Is that what we've got up front oh, here? Right, and uh, we have like a topsail schooner. Ah. Uh, That's in a Gordon's gin bottle exactly. too, so I can relate to that. And then we have, what's the, this here? This is the Chrissy Wright, a three-masted schooner that was built in Maine. Ah. See, uh, Maine uh, vessels uh, uh, wrecked a lot down here. Well, they were the ones building the boats. Yeah, and they were sinking North down North Carolina here. had the, the graveyard of the Atlantic. And then finally, this one here. What this is this? This is uh, the five master built in Camden, Maine, called the uh, Carol A. Deering, and it was the ghost ship of the Diamond Shoals. It oh, came, really? came ashore with all sails set oh. and no one on board. Oh, my gosh. All right. And what year was that, do you think? That was uh, about 1921, and their tales of mutiny and piracy <laughs> associated with that. All right, All right, now this is the one I guess you're saying the uh, little, it was called the, the, the Hattie, Hattie Creek. The Hattie Creek had to do with this story right here a little bit later in uh, the Outer Banks history. Right. And this is the Wright Brothers plane. And the Hattie Creek carried the Wright Brothers and their materials from Elizabeth City over to Kitty Hawk. Ah, all right. So we're going to do the, the little. Uh, Sharpie that carried the parts for the first flying machine. Exactly. Now, building an airplane, that's nothing. Anybody can do that, the first airplane. But get, how on earth do you get the ship in the bottle? That's the thing <laughs> that everybody wants to know. Well, the hardest part is emptying the bottle. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can help you with that if you need to. You have a way to show, all right, show us here now. How you Well, doing? what I got right here is a little demonstration model that I use when I go to maritime shows ah. and fairs. Uh, because people are always interested in what the secret is. And the secret is really knowing how. <laughs> okay. But if you look right down at the base of the mast, you see a little brass hinge right there. And oh, okay. that allows the mast to collapse down. And ah. if you'll assist me with uh, moving the, the mainsail back. Okay, I've got it there. Okay. And see, when it goes into a bottle, the mainsail will go back All right. first, and then that will curl up and fit into the bottle. Okay. Now, with your square sails, they you can cock bill them around so that they are ah, okay. parallel to the mast, and then you collapse the mast down. Ah, 
Ah, uh, there it is. Yeah. So it goes out all the way small like that with those lines, and this is able to slip mm -hmm. through the neck of the bottle. And then, once it's inside... And once it's inside, what we do, we pull the jib sails up, <laughs> okay, and then we pull our main mass back in. Yeah. And so that's all snug, and then we have special tools, which are nothing more than bent coat hangers and bent knitting needles. You just kind of reach around and rearrange mm -hmm. these. Right, yeah. and within the bottle, and then once it's in, we <laughs> apply a little <laughs> adhesive, and away we and go. And that's it, so you just got to make a little boat that collapses. That's the That's all right. it, right there. Well, all right, well, I know there's more to it. How do you begin? Do you just start making boats and then find bottles to put them in? Or? Well, you, you work with, uh, pick out your bottle, and <laughs> then you... Uh, decide what type of vessel you're going to put in that bottle. No, so the bottle is the, uh, you find a, what kind of bottle do you look for? Something that's clear, I guess? Right. Uh, you want something uh, optically clear, and some bottles will uh, mm. have some distortion in them, and that's just normal. Can look good. You know, in, in today's uh, uh, manufacturing. A certain expertise in this. This looks like a MD 2020 uh, uh, bottle. You are well versed ah, in your bottles. You know, I know thing. me bottles there. <laughs> Sorry. Now, so you get your bottle. And what we want to do is uh, get some reference lines. Mm -hmm. And on this uh, uh, piece of pine, I have two reference lines, which will give us the height of the bottle that we're going to be working with. Oh, okay. So when we come to determine our sail height, we will use those reference lines. So we don't end up making a boat uh, that's too tall to fit in the bottle. Exactly. Right. So you get your inside dimensions there. Then we start working with our... Uh, whittling out uh, on our uh, boat, <coughs> on our piece of wood, so this what is the, the hole is going to be. The hole will be. And I'm using uh, just red cedar, and I like the way it cuts. Yeah, and it's, it's good carving wood. All it right. is. Yeah, so it's soft and, and easy to carve down, mm -hmm. so you whittle down the shape of the boat. Now, this is a, a Sharpie, and it's like a chisel point, you've told me. Is that exactly. right? Exactly. Interesting, as opposed to this, which has uh, what you call that bow. Oh, that's oh, just a V-shaped bow, and it has a, a, a moderate dead rise, which oh, is the okay. dead rise is going to be the angle from your tip of the bow all the way down to the base of the hole there. But this is a Sharpie because it goes all the way all flat the way down. down. All right, let's see you do a little carving on that because they always have the cockpit in there, I know. Well, we have, what we have, we have the, uh, the cockpit, which is in the back. Uh-huh. Oh, and, and then the hat, uh, what do you call that center? That's, that's the hatch. That's the working hatch where they would... Uh, put their oysters, their yeah. cargo, and so we carve a little bit of that out. And uh, this little Caroline Sharpie, all the parts and the engine and everything for the Wright Brothers' first airplane traveled across the sound. So the first... <laughs> first airplane went for, across in this... In a sailboat. In a sailboat. Now, interesting enough, uh, a year after she carried the, uh, the Wright Brothers over, she was converted to steam. Ah. Now, did that happen to a lot of these? Uh, boats yes, it did actually. Huh. Yeah. And when I was researching the Hattie Creef, I found a picture of her uh, as a steamship, and I looked at the bow itself, and I go, "Man, that's a Sharpie bow." <laughs> oh, yeah. so she was she was originally a you know, a sailing ship, and then uh, converted to steam, like so many ships were done at the uh, the turn of the 19th century there. All right, now, I see, yeah, you know, you, as you've been talking, I've been thinking about those sails, you know, mm -hmm. they took them off to convert it to steam, but it's not just the sails that you have a problem with, you have to get to make sure the hull fits in. Exactly, now when you get, um, oh, <coughs> if we see there, right yeah. there. So you got a, literally a bottleneck there, you can't no, get, oh, it's yes. not going to fit. Yes, and so you got a, got a pile <laughs> or sand down. So that's the other limit there, make sure that you're able to go in. Mm -hmm. And also, you want to make sure that you have enough space for that bottle, uh, for the hole to go through, and then when it's all painted up, you'll be putting on some deck furniture as oh, well. Oh, that has to have clearance, clearance as well. Yeah, exactly, all and right. what that deck furniture is, is going to be either hatches or uh, uh, skylights. And here you've made a bunch of them in a line. Right, and so I will just, that saves a little time, and when I uh, need one, I will just cut them cut all. Cut it off and glue it. And yeah. then, on the flip side of that, I think I got my little uh, uh, oh, uh, right cabin here. right there. Yeah, there's your cabins. Okay, so just little strips of wood there. And now, what do you do if you've got a uh, big boat? You're doing something a hole oh, that's too like, big to go through that neck. Say something like uh, uh, the Queen Anne's Revenge or something like that. I have. Uh, ah. They will come in two pieces. You will put them in into uh, bread and butter. 
Oh, like okay. That. So it's like a sandwich there. So what right. the uh, put, this would go in first and then glue down. Mm-hmm. And then you would put in your uh, uh, upper piece, which would have all your your sails and your. Oh, okay. Here's another one again. Right. With, with that uh, two-piece hole there. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's lots of tricks. You can do these in slices. Right. And build them up. See, who would have thought of this? Unless you had to do. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're putting uh, a two-piece together, you need to make some gouges for your rigging to go through so it'll seat, seat properly on, onto your, your bottom piece uh, there. So, now one of the things you also told me, you've got to drill some tiny little holes <laughs> here, is of course you want to go ahead and paint it first and then drill the holes. Exactly. Because otherwise that paint will fill the holes. It may, you know, that's not something I would have thought of uh, to do. Mm -hmm. But I guess you're ready to do that. Uh, is that uh, well, the next thing can, once you get the mast and everything? Once we get the, uh, uh, our deck furniture in, you want to measure up your mast, okay? okay. And on the Sharpie, your <laughs> aft mast is uh, shorter than your foremast. And mm -hmm. so what we do, we want to make sure that we have clearance. And so I take a little uh, pointer scribe and point out, put a little uh, marker oh, hole, gotcha. pilot uh, indention, right where I want my, uh, my staple to go. And right. that'll give you a hinge point <laughs> at the same level as the roof so it can drop down flat because otherwise it'd be cocked if you had it at the bottom. Exactly. So again, none of those things you wouldn't think of. And right, so, so we just take, that marked. We just take a little uh, jeweler's drill and then with a very small bit go in and make Good. our hole. It's a tiny little drill. Now there's suppliers, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess it's, it's a long time. People have been right where their mail order mm -hmm. uh, little company that sells dowels yeah. and drills and stuff. Exactly, but I imagine that the old timers would either uh, heat up a wire and, and uh, drill oh, the hole that okay. way. And so we take our little small gauge wire, brass wire, and flip it through our hole, put mm -hmm. it in, insert it in there, and then just bend that down. And there we have that's our it. little... That's the hinge. Okay. That's it right there. Simple machine. <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> And then we just clip that off. All right. And then we are all set to go. All right. And then so we that put those right in there. And I guess you could glue those if you yeah. felt felt the need, but you can just kind of stick them in like nails. Yeah, I can stick them yeah. in like nails, and just you, sometimes you need to bend that just uh, just right, and mm -hmm. it just fits right in. Oh, and you can great. see as it flips down, yeah. you got a lot of clearance, that's and then you also want to check the clearance going into the bottle and see how it fits. Is it going to clear? Yes, oh, it does. Look Whoa, at that. It's tight, but I see that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> check love, your neck, in other words. Check yeah. your neck, and sometimes <laughs> getting it in, you might need to wiggle. Right. Now, we also need to put down our rigging lines. Okay. Now, ships will have a standing rigging mm -hmm. and a running rigging. Mm -hmm. And so, standing rigging goes from the hull, and it's supports the mast and it supports it in a triangular fashion okay ah, okay so, so we, two little we got two two just holes. holes you pressed in there with a set of dividers all right, right. and if you could put that in the vise for mm -hmm. me please while i reach around you to get the the drill right there so got a nice little drill all right so this is going to be the holes where the lines come out let me see if i can orient this on the uh yeah. where we are on the uh, item we're working on, those little lines right there. So these are those holes where those lines are going to go right there to hold the backstays and the shrouds, I am eating. Yeah, all right. Definitely. So all we do is just put our little drill bit in, and then we just do a little drill. Yes. And then we, we're drilling all the way through the hole, so our lines will go all the way through, and they won't be seen when we... When uh, we the fishes will. Yeah, uh, when we put it through. And let me know when I uh, break uh, through. There oh, 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 there oh, we I go. I'm let you know in time there. there okay, go. let's back out the all drill. All right. There we go. And all right, blow so you that drill off. a couple of those, and I guess, are you ready? Are we really ready? For doing the next step, and that is to do the rigging. All right. Now, I guess most boat yards, they had a rigging yard and a uh, sail loft and all that stuff. You got another exactly. place to work for us? And so we'll just uh, <laughs> move we'll to move the next. We'll move on, folks. We're heading on down in the shipyard now. Oh, uh, it's great. Now, how long have you been doing these, Jim? I've this been hitting been... the bottle for about <laughs> uh, six years now. <laughs> Drop my you remember thread. the first one you made? Yes, I do. And I recall that... Uh, 
I was using my old oil fill tongue. I used to work in the oil fill, and which is very similar to the sailor's tongue. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and Some of the language he shared, yes. And so my wife said, if you are going to uh, talk that way, you need to find something else to do. So, uh. But I progressed a little later. And when we do our rigging, you want to have a little stop knot mm -hmm. in there. So that is a, what, a thread? Uh, this is just a, just a number 10 beading needle. Uh -huh. And excuse oh, me. Oh, you're just trying to find where it, where it comes through on there the bottom there. Oh, okay, there we not go. Not so clear on the raw wood. There we go. And, and then there's we the stop knot. And then we just start threading with yeah. our, our shrouds and bring that down. This is funny. This is sewing a boat. It's pretty funny. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> is. Yeah, but okay. I see how why a lot of things are making sense here because on a sailing ship, the backstays and, sh and and stuff keep the mast from going forward towards the bow because that's where the wind pressure is. Right. right. That's where the stress will be. Uh -huh. And a lot of a lot of uh, ships uh, have had their backstays snap, oh. and then the the mast fell down and. Uh, uh, got wrecked. Yeah, and people get hit. <laughs> yeah, that's always the dramatic yeah. scene in the Getting old seafaring the film there. Now, on the backstays, we just go through our last hole, and our backstay is what uh, mm. keeps the mass from springing, as it's called. Mm -hmm. So we just. But that's also because their triangles come into the towards the aft of the ship. That's the reason that the mast has to drop down this way, and that's why most. Um, Ships in a bottle are sailing towards back out towards the neck. Right. All right. Also makes sense. You want to have them mm -hmm. kind of sailing towards the out out into the <laughs> right. out the out the bottle rather than towards the back end towards the lighthouse. That now, when work. you are finishing up your yes uh, your strings, <laughs> all you do is just tie a little knot right down there, ah. and you can just do a couple of oh, loops over okay. there like that, and then you got that. Tied Wonderful. off, and you now you are ready for your running rigging. Okay, now, now that that's ready. This will fold back on that hinge, just like the other one, but it has the standing rigging on it. And the running rigging is what holds the sails. Is that right? R uh, holds the sails and also uh, lets you pick up the uh, uh, position your mast. And what I have is a little stop knot right there. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, so fine. You can't see. There's a thread there with a knot in it. With uh, a little stop knot, knot and right then there. also I have some extra thread, and I need that extra thread for uh, securing the the top boom. And what we do, we just uh, that goes right through the top of the mast. Now you have got to have incredible eyesight or some magnification to do this. I'm going blind, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I am going blind. You'll get you know, the thing is you can still count on this. I bet you yes. can do these. If you've done how many of these? I mean, I've uh, really done a bunch of these. I've done over 500. And Are so you kidding me? I'm not kidding. No. 500 yeah. ships in a bottle. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So uh. now, see, we got our running rigging going uh -huh. here. And see, <clears throat> with that stop knot, that's able to pull the mast up. Uh -huh. So when it's down and you've got the vessel in the bottle, all you uh -huh. do is just pull that string and it pops <laughs> right back up. Isn't that neat? That's great. Yes, excellent. Isn't that neat? And then now, the same thing back here. So kind of exactly. Pull that up. Then right. the next thing that we do is put in our booms for, oh, okay. our, for our sails. And there's and the top and the bottom of the main The top there. Yeah. and the bottom. And for the bottom, what I do is use a different color thread. I see it. It's on this side. Oh, there you go. You're in it. And by using a different color thread, I know which string to pull. Ah, I know which strings to pull. I guess so. That's where that comes from too. Right. All right so the booms go on now, and then I guess are we really ready for the sails now? We're ready for sails. All right. Okay. Let's see how now, that goes. Should I take that off of there? Oh uh, yes, you can. Okay, because now you're working on a different kind of jig here. This is uh, called a. This is just a working jig, and all it is. Maybe we can stick that up in our stick little. Stick that on the nail there. Yeah, yeah there all we right. Go. Not too bad. Okay, and what we have, we have our our sails, one sail already attached, uh -huh. and the sail material is just 
A uh, cotton resume paper. <laughs> I so, like using. <laughs> so, if you're giving up hope of getting a job and you got that resume paper left over, that would do well. For exactly. You. you just cut it to fit. And you cut it to fit, oh. and you use just white glue to to glue it on, oh. and you let it dry. Now you can also use some resume paper and just stain it with coffee like I've done oh. here and I do that with the pirate ships. That's what you've got here. I right, coffee stained matey. And this is a pirate ship? This is the Queen Anne's Revenge. Oh. Okay, and it's a, an example of a full rig ship and you can see that you got that triangular stack sail. Oh, wonderful. And now this looks like it has lots of insulation in it. Why did the pirates like the insulation? Uh, because they liked having a R factor. Oh, oh I see. I mean, <laughs> so enough of that. <laughs> well, so there's this Sales. That's wonderful. Now, how do you get the curl on there? Well, that's quite easy. To, uh, all you do is with a, I like using a chopstick or any mm -hmm. type of uh, stick, round stick will do. And what you do, you just make a curl, and there you get your uh, uh, the billow effect in the sh in the sail. And see, I got that going the wrong way for us. Oh, okay. We have no, well, so we, we, we can change, just try a different tack there. We I can guess. try a different tack, and <laughs> whoa, I was there. So, depending on how you wanted the vessel to be on a starboard tack or a... Mm -hmm. or I see the sails here. That's on a uh, starboard tack. Billowing out. Yeah. All right, so now that's the sails, that's the booms. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, you know, let's go ahead and look at the uh, how you put this thing in here, because I sure want to see, make sure we can get this thing mm -hmm. into a bottle before we run out of time. So if you're all ready with that, we'll come back and look at some of the other things. Let's see how this assembly goes. Now, I know you've got a way to make an ocean with your clay, rolling it together. So you've prepared. Mm -hmm. You just make some worms a different color. Rub them together. And roll them. I love it. Yeah. Just like uh, <laughs> Damascus steel, you just roll it in. And then flatten them out. And you got water. All right, there's your water. All right, so now the bottle's ready. Let's see you go ahead and put one in here. Okay. All right, so this is the ship now. And what we do. Pull it back. Pull that back. Collapse our aft sail. Uh -huh. Our aft mast, and then pull the main mast, and then. All right. Now you can see I got my my lines numbered. All right. And then we curl this around. All right. <laughs> and we insert that into. As the hard mouth. as it is to get these things in, it's it's easier to get them in than it is to get them out. Oh, not that bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then at this point, I like to let gravity assist me, so oh, I will... Okay, so turn this up upright. Turn that upright. All right, that way your and sails we, are keeping out of... And from then the we tank. do a little wiggle and jiggle, and then we just push that through, and lo and oh, behold... yeah! And then with the assistance of some tall tweezers, uh -huh. the first line that I want to uh, pull up is going to be the jib. And so right, so that's the, you start from the bow of the ship. Exactly. All right. And then we pull our mainsail up. Ah, look at and, that. And then we pull Oh, it's perfect. our aft sail up. Ah. <laughs> and then we position our boat ah. within the sea. Now, at this point, you can add some uh, adhesive down to the bottom and help secure that boat or you, you can put uh, you know, just put some more clay around it and secure it. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so then you can glue these uh, into place there, glue the lines, and then mm -hmm. reach in there and start cutting them? Well, before you do, if you move that one down, mm -hmm. I have another demonstration right. right here. Yeah. We have, this one's already secured in, and with a uh, little dowel that's got a brass wire that's got a little loop on it, uh -huh. I can put some adhesive onto that little loop, and that adhesive will stay in, and so I will come in and touch the lines and my little brass hen with uh, the glue, uh -huh. and it will stay. How do you how do you make the glue dry? Well, oh, okay. oh don't, <laughs> yeah, it got to blow the other way. <laughs> yeah. so, too much glue. Yeah, all right, and then, then so they're glued down, and then I guess you reach in and do the cutting, and that's right. why all the little knives. I got on. knives set at different angles on dowel rods, and oh. this is the right one, and so I can just nip those strings right there. All right, and then you seal up the bottle. All well, right. that's great. All right, so there it is. And again, the name of the, the ship, Jim, is the, it is the Hattie Creef. The Hattie Creef. And here it is all raised up into place, and here's one all finished up. It's beautiful. And the Carolina Sharpie. Now, you have an antique here. I wanted to yes. take a second <coughs> to look at. And I know you were working with the plasticine clay. This looks like uh, something else down here. It looks got. like a, a type of plumber's putty. 
uh -huh. right there. And this is a European made, and uh, more specifically, a British made ship. Uh, you can tell because it has the British merchant flag on the back of the clipper ship. And this is very typical of, uh, say, like a 1910 up to like a uh, 1930 piece because it has the, the painted background, the very uh, detailed village in there. And, and what, can you read it? What yeah, it says Guinness it? Stout. Oh, in there. right. And so it's got beautiful rope work, work right on the there. front. Well, the Guinness wouldn't work for a bottle. It has to be clear. You've made it all very clear to us. Jim, go back. Thank, thank you, very you much. so much for showing us how to do this. And hey, thank you for joining me. You start emptying those bottles. We're going to put ships in them next time we get together. All right, see you next time. It's Roy Underhill. Bye bye. To learn more about the Woodwright Shop and traditional woodworking, visit PBS online. You can find us at pbs.org. Major funding for the Woodwright Shop is provided by Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We are PBS. Roy Underhill is the author of The Woodwright Shop and other books about traditional woodworking, published by the University of North Carolina Press and available at bookstores and libraries. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. It's really knowing how. <laughs> <laughs> but if you look right down at the base of the mast, you see a little brass hinge right there. And oh, okay. that allows the mast to collapse down. Ah. And if you'll assist me with uh, moving the, the mainsail back. Okay, I've got it there. Okay. And see, when it goes into a bottle, the mainsail will go back All right. first. And then that will curl up and fit into the bottle. Okay. Now with your square sails, they you can cock build them around so that they are ah, okay. parallel to the mast, and then you collapse the mast down. Ah, there it is. And so it goes out all the way small like that with those lines, and this is able to slip through the neck of the bottle. And then once it's inside. Once it's inside, what we do, we pull the jib sails up, <laughs> okay, and then we pull our main mast back in. Yeah. And so that's all snug. And then we have special tools, which are nothing more than bent coat hangers and bent knitting needles. You just kind of reach around and rearrange these. Right. Yeah. And within the bottle. And then once it's in, we <laughs> apply a little <laughs> adhesive and away we and go. And that's it. So you just got to make a little boat that collapses. That's the trick. That's right. it right there. Well, all right. Well, I know there's more to it. How do you begin? Do you just start making boats and then find bottles to put them in? Or? Well, you, you work with, uh, pick out your bottle and <laughs> then you, uh, decide what type of vessel you're going to put in that bottle. Oh, so the bottle is the, uh, you find a, what kind of bottle do you look for? Something that's clear, I guess? Right. Uh, you want something uh, optically clear, and some bottles will uh, have some distortion in them, and that's just normal. Can look and, good. You know, in, in today's uh, uh, manufacturing. certain expertise in this. This looks like a MD-2020 uh, uh, You are well versed ah, in your bottles. Yeah, I know there. Many bottles there. <laughs> Sorry. So you get your bottle. And what we want to do is uh, get some reference lines. Mm -hmm. And on this uh, uh, piece of pine, I have two reference lines, which will give us. As you've been talking, I've been thinking about those sails. You know, mm -hmm. they took them off to convert it to steam. But it's not just the sails that you have a problem with. You have to get make sure the hull fits in. Exactly. Now, when you get, uh, oh, <clears throat> if we 
See there, right yeah. there. Yeah, so you got a, literally a bottleneck there. You can't no. get, oh, it's yes. not going to fit. And so you got to got a file <laughs> or sand down. So that's the other limit there. Make sure that you're able to go in. Mm -hmm. And also, you want to make sure that you have enough space for that bottle, uh, for the hole to go through. And then when it's all painted up, you'll be putting on some deck furniture as oh, well. Oh, that has to have clearance, clearance as well. Yeah, exactly. All and right. what that deck furniture is, is going to be either hatches or, uh, uh, skylights and here you've made a bunch of them in a line right and so I will just that saves a little time and when I uh, need one I will just cut them cut all it off and, glue it. and yeah. then on the flip side of that I think I got my little uh, uh, oh, uh, right cabin here. right there yeah there's your cabins okay so just little strips of wood there and now what do you do if you've got a uh, big boat you're doing something uh, a hole that's too like, big to go through that neck say something like uh, uh, the Queen Anne's Revenge or something like that I have, uh, ah. they will come in two pieces. You will put them in, into uh, bread and butter. Oh, like okay, that. so it's like a sandwich there. So what right. the, uh, you'll this would go in first and then glue down? Mm-hmm, and then you would put in your uh, uh, upper piece, which would have all your your sails and your... Oh, okay, here's another one again right. with, with that uh, two-piece hole there. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's lots of tricks. You can do these in slices right. and build them up. See, who would have thought of this unless you had to do <laughs> And when you're putting uh, a two-piece together, you need to make some gouges for your rigging to go through so it'll seek seat properly on onto your, your bottom piece uh, there. So, now one of the things you also told me you've got to drill some tiny little holes <laughs> here is of course you want to go ahead and paint it first and then drill the holes because exactly. otherwise that paint will fill the holes. It may, you know, that's not something I would have thought of uh, to do. Mm -hmm. But I guess you're ready to do that. Uh, is that uh, well, the next we thing once you get... Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Major funding for the Woodwright Shop is provided by More than 40 million people who care for their cars and homes choose State Farm for their insurance. State Farm, a proud supporter of the Woodwright Shop. Hello again, and welcome back to the Woodwright Shop. I'm Roy Underhill, and I'm so glad you can be with me again today because it looks like the fleet has come in. Yes, the fleet is in the flask. The boat is in the bottle, and that can only mean that that master of the maritime miniature has come to visit to show us how to do boats in bottles. Yes, folks, it's Jim Goose Goodwin here. Yes, hey, good to Roy, see you, Jim. How's it going? All right, very good, very good. You're going to show us to do ship in a bottle like this one right here now, is that right? Right. This is a, a Sharpie, more specifically a Carolina Sharpie, and this particular Sharpie is called the Hattie Creek uh -huh. and based out of Elizabeth City, and this modest little workboat holds an important place in history. Oh, really? And that's what you've got kind of assembled over here, a history of a specific region of the United States in maritime models. This is the Outer Banks history. Right. And... Uh, just like in any ship model, uh, not only is it a piece of art, but it's also a piece of history. Mm, what and are these? this particular piece right here, I'm calling Blackbeard's Fleet, and <laughs> it has the Queen Anne's Revenge, ah. the two uh, sloops that accompanied Blackbeard, the okay. Adventure and the Ranger. And, and up you, here in the neck, I even see you've got Blackbeard I, himself there. Definitely uh, watching over the place. Uh, wonderful. Now, of course, uh, the Outer Banks was called the Graveyard of the Atlantic. All these ships sinking there. Is that what we've got up front oh, here? Right, and uh, we have like a topsail schooner. Ah. Uh, That's in a Gordon's gin bottle exactly. too, so I can relate to that. And then we have, what's the, this here? This is the Chrissy Wright, a three-masted schooner that was built in Maine. Ah. See, uh, Maine uh, vessels, uh, 
uh, wrecked a lot down here. Well, they were the ones building the boats. Yeah, and they were down sinking in North down Carolina here. had the, the graveyard of the Atlantic. And then finally, this one here. What this is this? Is a, the five master built in Camden, Maine, called the uh, Carol A. Daring, and it was the ghost ship of the Diamond Shoals. It oh, came, really? came ashore with all sails set <sighs> and no one on board. Oh, my gosh. All right. And what year was that, do you think? That was uh, about 1921, and their tales of mutiny and piracy <laughs> associated with that. All right, All right, now this is the one I guess you're saying the uh, little, it was called the, the, the Hattie, Hattie Creek. The Hattie Creek had to do with this story right here a little bit later in uh, the Outer Banks history. Right. And this is the Wright Brothers plane. And the Hattie Creek carried the Wright brothers and their materials from Elizabeth City over to Kitty Hawk. Ah, all right. So we're going to do the, the little uh, Sharpie that carried the parts for the first flying machine. Exactly. Now, building an airplane, that's eh, nothing. Anybody can do that. The right. first airplane. But get, how on earth do you get the ship in the bottle? That's the thing <laughs> that everybody wants to know. Well, the hardest part is emptying the bottle. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can help you with that if you need to. You have a way to show. All right. Show us here now. How you well, doing? what I got right here is a little demonstration model that I use when I go to maritime shows ah. and fairs. Uh, because people are always interested in what the secret is. And the secret is the height of the bottle that we're going to be working with. Oh, okay. So when we come to determine our sail height, we will use those reference lines. So we don't end up making a boat uh, that's too tall to fit in the bottle. Exactly. Right, so you get your inside dimensions there. Then we start working with our uh, whittling out uh, on our uh, boat. <clears throat> on our piece of wood, so this what is the, the hole is going to be? The hole will be, and I'm using uh, just red cedar, and I like the way it cuts. That's and it's good carving wood. All it right. is. Yeah, it's so soft and, and easy to carve down. Mm -hmm. So you whittle down the shape of the boat. Now this is a, a sharpie, and it's like a chisel point. You told me, is that exactly. right? Exactly. Interesting, as opposed to this, which has uh, what you call that bow. Oh, that's called just a V-shaped bow, and it has a, a, a moderate dead rise, which oh, is the okay. dead rise is going to be the angle from your tip of the bow all the way down to the base of the hull there. But this is a Sharpie because it goes all the way, all the way down. down. All right, well, let's see you do a little carbon on that because they always have the cockpit in there, I know. Well, we have what we have. We have the uh, the cockpit, which is in the back. Uh huh. And oh, and then, then the hat. Uh, what do you call that center? That's, that's the hatch. That's the working hatch where they would... Uh, put their oysters, their yeah. cargo, and so we carve a little bit about out. And uh, this little Carolina Sharpie, all the parts and the engine and everything for the Wright Brothers first airplane traveled across the sound. So the first <laughs> first airplane went for, across in this in particular, sailboat. In a sailboat. Now, interesting enough, uh, a year after she carried the uh, the Wright Brothers over, she was converted to steam. Ah. Now, did that happen to a lot of these? Uh, uh, yes, it did, actually. Huh. Yeah. And when I was researching the Hattie Creef, I found a picture of her uh, as a steamship, and I looked at the bow itself, and I go, man, that's a Sharpie bow. <laughs> oh, yeah. so she, was, she was originally a, you know, a sailing ship and then uh, converted to steam, like so many ships were done at the, uh, the turn of the 19th century there. All right. Now, I see. Yeah, you know, you podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting unctv major funding for the woodwright shop is provided by more than 40 million people who care for their cars and homes choose state farm for their insurance state farm a proud supporter of the Woodwrights Shop. Hello again, and welcome back to the Woodwright Shop. I'm Roy Underhill, and I'm so glad you can be with me again today because it looks like the fleet has come in. Yes, the fleet is in the flask. The boat is in the bottle. 
and that can only mean that that master of the maritime miniature has come to visit to show us how to do boats in bottles. Yes, folks, it's Jim Goose Goodwin here. Yes, hey, good to Roy, see you, Jim. How's it going? All right, very good, very good. You're going to show us to do ship in a bottle like this one right here now. Is that right? Right. This is a, a Sharpie, more specifically a Carolina Sharpie. And this particular Sharpie is called the Hattie Creef uh -huh. and based out of Elizabeth City. And this modest little workboat holds an important place in history. Oh, really? And that's what you've got kind of assembled over here, a history of a specific region of the United States in maritime models. This is the Outer Banks history. Right. And uh, just like in any ship model, uh, not only is it a piece of art, but it's also a piece of history. Mm, and this particular piece right here, I'm calling Blackbeard's Fleet, ah. and it has the Queen Anne's Revenge, ah. the two uh, sloops that accompanied Blackbeard, okay. the Adventure and the Ranger. And, and up here in the neck, I even see you've got Blackbeard I, himself there. Definitely, uh, watching over the place. Uh, wonderful. Now, of course, uh, the Outer Banks was called the Graveyard of the Atlantic. All these ships sinking there. Is that what we've got up front oh, here? Right, and uh, we have like a topsail schooner. Ah. Uh, That's in a Gordon's gin bottle exactly. too, so I can relate to that. And then we have, what's the, this here? This is the Chrissy Wright, a three-masted schooner that was built in Maine. Ah. See, uh, Maine uh, vessels uh, uh, wrecked a lot down here. Well, they were the ones building the boats. Yeah, and they were sinking North down Carolina here. Carolina had the, the graveyard of the Atlantic. And then finally, this one here. What this is, is this? Uh, the five-master built in Camden, Maine, called the uh, Carol A. Daring, and it was the ghost ship of the Diamond Shoals. It oh, came, really? came ashore with all sails set <sighs> and no one on board. Oh, my gosh. All right. And what year was that, do you think? That was... Uh, about 1921 and their tales of mutiny and piracy <laughs> associated with that. All right, All right, now this is the one I guess you're saying the uh, little, it was called the, the, the Hattie, Hattie Creek. The Hattie Creek had to do with this story right here a little bit later in uh, the Outer Banks history. Right. And this is the Wright Brothers plane. And the Hattie Creek carried the Wright brothers and their materials from Elizabeth City over to Kitty Hawk. Ah, all right. So we're going to do the, the little uh,